President mentioned that the creation of the Mahadi Pet Investment Fund was his idea. Will the President certify the Vilas region? Well, that's up to him, no? That's a, uh, I think, uh, in the House, just to let you know, I've been, uh, I've been uh, um, keeping myself updated. Yesterday, as a press time, it was reported that there were nine people offers. Um, before they went to bed tonight in Manila, the uh, majority of leaders told me that um, uh, we have over 200 people. And I think um, by the time I get back, back on out, there will be 50. So there will be over two thirds of the house will be co authoring because there have been exhaustive briefings, no? not just by the economic managers and by the GFI, but we had a lot of uh, technical expertise no? uh, in, this, uh, in this matter. And there's been a very, very healthy exchange, as you can see. Um, you know, there were some concerns and sensitivities on the source of the funds, but of course, that's been resolved. But I'd like to very much just make, make, make a case for, let's look at the back end of this all. The whole purpose for setting up a sovereign wealth fund is to provide uh, the capital and the vehicle for which we can bring further development and benefits to the people. And, uh, well, as they say, no, uh, especially when it comes to capital investment, size does matter. We need scale to participate in large um, uh, projects, whether they be infrastructure, power, even in the agricultural sector, you need um, uh, massive uh, capital. And when you pull that, and we have um, a lot of, um, uh, not just GFI, but a lot of government oil controlled corporations that have a lot of capital, you know, that this line, they're very, very much idle then it would be a very, very good um, uh, form of uh, its utilization and to get the best and the brightest people uh, would be accountable for its proper management and investment so that we get the proper yields and the uh, proper benefits that will be derived you know, from this exercise. In fact, um, uh, whether they be, uh, let's say, a, a good portion of it would be even uh, devoted I'm talking about the benefits or the profits you know, to all of the uh, social you know, uh, the social assistance uh, projects that we have to use that. We have a lot of other you know, uh, uh, ideas on how to um, use this fund to actually help the power crisis, the agricultural uh, you know, needs of you know, the country. And having scale always does matter and of course once you see in the country actually uh, putting an investment in a certain industry or in a certain project, then you attract others uh, who would have the confidence because when you come up with the song of the accountability are quite high, so it's almost like a, good, a seal good housekeeping. When you, when you see a sovereign fund moving and investing in this industry or in this uh, sector, everyone then will want to come in because uh, before you invest or you put in that capital, you the due diligence. And with that size of capital, the chances of success are much larger. I mean, even in, you know, in the in common everyday life. usually, the chances of its uh, survival are better than having a smaller capitalized, you know. Uh, company because of the, the, the competition and you know the market conditions so we're very excited for it and i see that um, you know, two thirds of the house uh who have already seen you know the wisdom and you know uh, the benefits no, uh, to the country and to the people as a whole so we're quite excited for this no? so and um, the timing is definitely now because that's the only thing that I want to share with you, that um, even this whole engagement with the European Union is wonderful because you have the EU looking at the ASEAN. ASEAN is the only bright spot in the global economy. That's a fact. It's, if, you, if you want to go around the world, you see which economy is growing. You can already see China has slowed down because of the COVID situation and the lockdown that has slowed down the economy, so everyone now is looking at the ASEAN. And the ASEAN, as we can see, you know, you have two countries that are leading in the growth, and that's both Vietnam and the Philippines. 
In the Philippine cinema, you have a democratic view that the leader, one was a very, very, uh, uh, it's is not the, you know, it's not the mandate that um, is the envy of all. Uh, and he's a government um, that is united. Uh, our neighbors in, you know, in, uh, in Malaysia have had quite, you know, a challenge to get the government together. And the other governments, you know, are, are being led by leaders who will be turning out within the next couple of years. So you have a you have a newly elected leader in a country whose economy is not only in recovery mode, but is in a, a very, very high trajectory recovery mode, evidenced by its GDP and the demographics of our country in that itself we have to be at the age of 25 years old. You know, that's why the president said the breaks all the time with the, you know, the field pump. He does recognize that between 30 to 40 billion of overseas, uh, for overseas businesses flowing in every year. We have a consumer-driven economy. And the bulk of those remittances come in on the last quarter. So the 7.6% GDP that you all saw last quarter, the third quarter, I'm sure it can be easily replicated if not even surpassed on the fourth quarter. And um, he's also poised, as soon as he comes back from Brussels, the president is poised to sign the biggest budget ever for the country. And uh, we are told by uh, the economic managers that this will be immediately deployed, so he's close to two thirds of that being deployed in the first semester. So you can see how our economy's uh, growth will be sustained with the government spending. And so I think, you know, things are looking quite bright for the Philippines. So it's no secret that um, in the Indo-Pacific, India, Vietnam, and Philippines, or some people even call it now, the VIP nations, no? That's the place to invest. And uh, the president, I believe, has confirmed his um, visit to Switzerland, to Davos, no? Where he was invited by no less than the uh, noted uh, Professor Klaus Schwab who was said to me personally when I bumped into him in Tel Aviv at the ASEAN, he says, your country is doing quite well. In fact, we've seen the growth numbers and it's quite positive and we would like to hear the Philippine story in Davos. So, let me know in one of these, parang siyang pipe-pipe for ng mga negosyante and he invites all these heads of state and I understand, I think, Korea and Japan have confirmed. And I believe, you know, from his presentation and then the invitation to the president, that he would like to highlight, you know, the president's uh, economic policies, what the Philippines is doing, and why it's one of the leaders in the ASEAN. And um, you have big businesses there, and heads of state there. And uh, I believe if I were if I were anyone there, you know, and they were looking for a bright spot on where to put their capital or money, and we've done the swing of the ASEAN nations already, but our neighbors, I believe there's a lot of Western capital that's looking for a home uh, during these very, very turbulent times, no? And uh, the ASEAN is a good region, is the best region, and I think the Philippines is a bright spot because uh, Vietnam is kind of a bit of a head start. So if I were an investor, I'd come and uh, invest and, uh, you know, come to the Philippines. So that's why um, even um, a sovereign wealth fund being talked about, and if we get this passed in the house, and um, this could be talked about in the sidelines, that um, the Philippines is coming out with one. And by the way, just for your information, over 70 countries have sovereign wealth funds. We have over 100 sovereign wealth funds. And, I think the pattern we have is that 99% of them are successful. I think there might just be one or two that you know, have been talked about in the media, but um, those are not representative of what a sovereign wealth fund experience is all about. So, to the naysayers, you know, unfortunately, we in the House of Representatives are here. We are actually paid to look at the situation of the country, represent the people, to find ways and means to improve the lives of the people, and we see that it's a very, very good vehicle, and uh, we're adopting best practices that we're being very, very sensitive to the to the concerns of um, the critics, but those who have their strong opinions when making adjustments, that's the very 
as it's in a democracy, and that's what's happening in the House. So we have some legislators who are very, very much against it, but um, because of the dialogue that we have, that's why we go through first reading, second reading, we um, uh, have committee hearings, then we go to the plenary, we have debates. And that's the process that we go through, and that's how you actually um, refine, revise, amend, or actually, in the words of the President, perfect the law, at least to the best of our abilities. So uh, we're very happy that the number of uh, congressmen who were not keen on it or critical are now joining and not just supporting, but even joining as co-authors because their own inputs and insights have been integrated into the, into the bill. So, Sir, uh, thank you. Just